Greetings, Tiger and Tide fans. This is Stitch here with my friend Drew, and this is going to be sort of a, like a, I guess like a hybrid version of football on the plains, as it was previously known. Uh, Chad, I, I, you know, I'd like to thank him for attempting to give us his audio equipment to use, but uh, alas, it did not work with my uh, POS camcorder. So, anyways, uh, we're just going to sort of dive right in and uh, talk about. I mean, start with the uh, the upcoming season, I guess. That'll work, man. Uh, well, I hope you guys uh, do enjoy the show that we're going to put on for you guys over the next uh, fall here, football season. I hope you guys are just as excited about football season yes. as we are. Uh, I'm sure right behind my love for Alabama football and Stephen's love for Auburn football is our mutual love for SEC sports in general. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoy the show. Uh, I say SEC sports because let me reiterate, if you are the fan of another conference, uh, get a box of tissues, be prepared to cry a little bit, we may dog on you a bit, but uh, it's all in good fun. Uh, and like Stephen said, we're going to go ahead and uh, jump right in. Yeah, uh, okay, let's see. Auburn has probably the biggest prospect they've had in quite some time, a quarterback in Cameron Newton. This guy, just just an athletic freak, um, and, and, you know, has Jamarcus Russell arm combined with Tim Tebow mobility. He's sort of the ultimate weapon. And there was an article on ESPN on him uh, recently called The Secret Weapon. So we'll, you know, you know, and I think the I think the key for 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 Newton's success, uh, you know, when, when we look at Auburn's offensive game plan and the kind of sets they run, the plays they run, these quick hits, you know, you see them doing a lot of slant yeah. routes, a lot of in routes, things like that, these quick hitting plays to keep the defense on its toes and just wear the defense down. I think the key to that is for Cam Newton is going to not only have to really be mobile and really stay healthy from the waist down, yeah. uh, but in addition to that, his accuracy. Uh, it's just going to have to be top notch. If he's yeah. going to be thrown on the run, he's going to be thrown into traffic. He's going to be thrown across his body a good bit, uh, you know, and, and that that might be an area of worry for the Auburn faithful. Yeah. Now I, I've heard predictions. And I actually think this is a strong possibility is that he could break the SEC record for total offense, like total yards from scrimmage. Um, I actually think he could join Vince Young and a, and a few others in the uh, in the you know the 2500 1000 club, which is a very elite. Yeah, I, I would definitely uh, definitely be inclined to agree with you. And I think, yet again, uh, what that's going to stem from uh, is Auburn's offensive scheme as a whole. Right. I think they're, they're bringing in, uh, like you mentioned, you're bringing in a fantastic athlete. There's no doubt about that. The guy is just a phenomenal athlete. Uh, and you're putting him in a system uh, that's just designed for it's him. Oh, yeah, it's going to take all of his talents yeah. and everything. You know, and like I said, as long as the guy, you know, his ankles and knees stay healthy, uh, I, I think you're right. I think he may put up several, several hundred yards rushing uh, as well as some decent numbers through the air. I, I think you can get um, double-digit touchdowns through on the ground, too. So be, yeah, be absolutely. Sort of like absolutely. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, like, basically Auburn's season hinges on this guy's development. Like, if, if he doesn't develop, it could be a disaster. If, if he does develop, it could be really something special. I think so, and I think, you know, just as a little side note with what you just said, I think that is the only, the only thing uh, that may hinder Auburn is that they are putting so much on the shoulders of Cam Newton that if yeah. something goes wrong, you know, God forbid the guy get injured in some way, yeah. uh, you know, because nobody likes to see an athlete get hurt. But uh, you know, if he does go down, you know, you're kind of, you, you kind of start to scratch your head. You know, what will Auburn do? What will be? What is Plan B? That's my biggest question because. And the SEC, well, it's all about staying healthy. Yeah, I don't uh, know what Plan B is. Now, well, this hasn't been the case in the past, but they do have some guys behind it, like Neil Caldwell's a fifth-year senior. So yeah, if, if yeah, disaster that's strikes, that's like true. I think Neil Caldwell can come in and win games. Now, but does he have the potential that Cam Newton does? Absolutely not. Like, okay. Right. I right. mean, uh, the Newton, like without even seeing him play, he's probably the best athlete quarterback in the SEC. But um, anyway, as far as physical tools, I mean, we've got to see the production on the field first. But, right. Uh, but Auburn does return um, nine on offense with, uh, I mean, Cam Newton being one of the replacements. So that's definitely an upgrade from Chris Todd. No well, respect to Todd. You know, uh, to Todd, but. on that note, going uh, to another to another SEC quarterback uh, and talking about guys coming into a program, uh, you know, your thoughts on the Crimson Tide? We we replaced yeah. eight guys on defense. Um, which is which is going to be tough. You know the biggest question oh, no, right no now. Question. Uh, secondary. Secondary is going to be the biggest yeah. question. Um, you know what are we going to do? Yeah. Well, you know I remember in um, what was it 2001 the Miami Hurricanes won the national championship. They lost. Um, it was it was around the same number of starters. I don't know that it was that many. Yeah, I think they had lost like, six. I believe. But, but, yeah, I think they lost but, six. Well, they lost the entire secondary. Right. Like, everybody. Right, right. And they, they were actually better against the pass the next year. So I mean, you know, which you know, we, we've got a uh, we got a walk on one of our walk ons starting at yeah. safety. Uh, and, and the biggest thing for me here is what I look forward to do is uh, I think the key to Alabama on defense is Dante Hightower coming off uh, a pretty 
pretty significant injury. You know, a lot of people oh, yeah. are saying he's better now than he was before. Uh, but that being said, you know, you got Ron McClain leaves, uh, and he's really the, the, the ship master of the, the defense. The bell the you day. know, it, the yeah. question is going to be, can Dante Hightower really fill that role? That, and, and, you know, and... Um, I don't know. And, and McLean had like Terrence Cody up to you know to keep people off of him and let him make plays and stuff like that. And right, Cody's right. not going to be there anymore. And I mean, he's an NFL starter, so that's going to be a significant loss. For you know, and I, and I think uh, look for Alabama to bring a lot more pressure on first and second down. I so think so take more chances. I think the key, I think yeah. they have to. I think they have yeah. to because I think we're going up against against a lot of good offensive lines this year in the SEC. A lot of returning yeah. offensive lines. Georgia being one of them. Yeah, you know, if we face Georgia, let's say if we do face them in the SEC championship, uh, you know, which may be a long shot, they may be a bit of a dark horse. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, if we face a team like that who's got a lot of experience coming back. Uh, the key is going to be we've got to free up our linebackers to make plays, oh, and we've got to free up some of our secondary to take some pressure off of them. Uh, you know, we got a lot of new guys coming in. The key is going to be let's let's keep some pressure up front. Let's keep let's get the war in the trenches. You know, yeah. one of Madden's good things that he always says, it's all about the battle in the trenches, the big <laughs> boys up front. And I think that's going to be the key for Alabama this year. Yeah, um, but who did they, did they lose anyone on the offensive line last year? Because Auburn returned everybody. Uh, I, you know, the biggest thing that I've paid attention to is watching uh, watching Fluker. Uh, the guy has lost, uh, gosh, I'm sure, you know, we probably need him to actually give us his exact weight that he's lost. But just seeing pictures of the guy from last year and this year, it seems like he doesn't have an ounce of fat on him, and the guy has just turned into this just unbelievable animal on the right side. Yeah. I'm really excited to see uh, what he does leading the way for Mark Ingram. Uh, you know, talking about Mark Ingram, um, brings you to another guy in our backfield. Uh, do you think it's possible for uh, McElroy to enter the two uh, two national championship club? You know, in, in the BCS yeah. era. Let's clarify. Yeah, that. yeah. And we in the BCS earlier. era, we have what? There's two others that have done it. Uh, uh, first of all, Matt Liner. Matt, Matt, Matt Liner, uh, you know, a legitimate just, starter. Yeah, he, 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 he started was, both yeah. years that he won a national championship. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, he, he's, he's, you know. I'd say he's the best quarterback we've seen in the BCS era, honestly. Um, I would, I would be inclined yeah. to agree. Yeah, right. As a, as a college yeah. player, I'm not talking about his NFL career, right? Which no. may get pan out for him, but uh, yeah. And, you know, and then of course you got Tim Tebow, which uh, yeah. a little bit of debate. You know, Tim Tebow's first national championship, he split time with Chris Leak, but I think he got it included for the sole reason uh, that that was their game plan. It, it was, was their game yeah. plan to split time. You know, it wasn't like he was a bench quarterback. Uh, coming off and just happened to right, win. Yeah. Uh, you know, that was part of their offensive scheme. And, you know, I, I really think that uh, McElroy has a legitimate chance to join that club. Yeah, I mean, they're pretty season number one, so no uh, You know, of course, with that, everybody's yeah. gunning for you. But, uh, yeah. you know, talking about that, okay, we got the national championship. Let's talk about who do you think, uh, who are our Heisman candidates? In the, in the SEC. In the SEC, who are our there's, Heisman candidates? Well, there's two obvious ones. Mark Ingram, of course, won it last year. Uh, okay. That's, he's always the front runner. You know, right. Got, you know, returns times of course. And, um, Ryan Mallett. I think Mallett's going to be, you know. Ryan, I think Ryan Mallett will go to New York. Like I, I don't. I, I think I, I would be hard pressed to believe he won't get an invite. I, I think he could have you know? an Eli Manning type. I, I agree with you. I think he could. Uh, you know, he really could. He is actually his junior year, but. I mean, speaking of that, you know, you're looking at. Uh, let's look at some other awards. Let's look at our uh, the wide receiver award. Um, I always have trouble just pronouncing the guy's last. Well, the Bolitnikoff award. The Bolitnikoff, thank you. Yeah. I seem to stumble over that each time. But I mean, yeah. you know, we got a couple of elite receivers this year in the SEC. Yeah, they're, they're going to make some noise nationally. Yeah, there's three big ones. I mean, uh, Darwin Adams caught for 990 some odd yards last year. Yeah, unbelievable. Double digit unbelievable. touchdowns. Unbelievable. First, unbelievable. Uh, first, I believe it's the first time an Auburn receiver has caught for double digit touchdowns in the season. It is. It's yeah. been a while that I can remember. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. Yeah, A.J. Green, he's a name that... The, yeah, you got to know A.J. Green all, all over there in Georgia. All SEC fans have heard about for the last couple of years. As right. it's Julio Jones, who yeah. you know, productivity-wise did not have the year that he had hoped for as a sophomore, but he yeah, was breaking in a new quarterback and with a house exactly. running back. Exactly. I think last year the focus became uh, became the, the, the power running game yeah. for Alabama. Um, I think because it was just such a success. Uh, yeah, and, and, like, and, and also like they could win a lot of games. Like, you know, they, they won 13... Well, 13 12 or whatever it was at Tennessee or, uh, or it, against Tennessee and like they didn't really like they, they didn't see, you know have the need to take chances I guess right I think if we get uh, into the situation where we really feel so comfortable airing awesome. the ball out I look for Julio to put up a grand you know yeah I hope he does I hope he does um yeah because I mean they're, they're like like we talked about their defense is 
you know, it's not going to be as good as it was last year. You know, it's not going to be the right. number one overall most likely. Right. So they'll probably have to throw it. Have to exactly. Um, you know, if, if, especially you know if they get down, you know, ten three or something. You know, you know, and Julio is one of those guys that really you can throw to him and just let him go up and make the play. That, that's yeah. the biggest thing is that you know let the guy go up and make the play, which is the same thing with all three of those receivers we mentioned. Uh, look for each of them to just really go, uh, yeah. you know, go for, I think, go for gold each game that yeah. they're out there. They're going to be out there making plays, uh, which is going to be something exciting to see. Yeah. Really, really going to be exciting to see what if, this is a far-off scenario, <laughs> let's picture Adams and Julio both going into week 12 of the season, 11-0 and 0 behind them, national championship on the line. That, you know, you know, unbelievable. Honestly, if that happens, there could be as many as five Heisman Trophy candidates on the field at one time. Well, not at one time because they'll be an offensive player. Let's be let's be over yeah. here. Yeah. But um, yeah, you know, I mean that, that'd be that'd be something great. You know what else is exciting is the the, uh, the potential for uh, many of these staff members to be head coaches eventually. Oh, absolutely. I think, I think Alabama, both Alabama and Auburn, like, they both have the two just unbelievable coordinators with uh, with Mount Melzon at Auburn and. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Kirby Smart in Alabama, but both of which could have been head coaches. Could have been yeah, yeah. last year, but they're, <laughs> exactly. they're, they're holding out for something better, which is it's always a good idea. Which you know what? In, in either one of those cases, if you have a chance to compete for an SEC championship, why not have that on your resume? Oh, exactly. I mean, yeah. let's think about that, it. That's because that, I mean that, that could be the difference between going to Buffalo and Oklahoma State. Or, exactly. You know, I mean, let's think. Program. Let's let's be honest. Uh, in, in in a lot of cases. Uh, you know, an SEC championship looks better on your resume than some of these other bowl games that some of these other teams yeah. compete in. Yeah, uh, and you also know. you need the sustained success, which Kirby Smart's had for like two years. Right. And Mel Elzon's going into his second at, at Auburn. And, I mean, yes, I have no doubt both of those guys will be head coaches inside of five years if, if they want to. But Yeah, I think, um, I think that's a very, very realistic. And yeah. you know what? Not just a head coach, but a head coach of a program that's going to oh, compete, compete for a post-New Year's Day bowl. Yeah. Um, let's see. What, what, what else did you have? Um, well, you know, the, uh, one of the other questions that I kind of had in mind was, uh, you know, I really want to let, – let's sit down and talk about for just a second uh, and I, as we're closing up here. Let's talk about some of these teams in the SEC that have really come from the bottom, yeah. you know, like, and, and are really starting to make some make some ground. Uh, to, to me, like at the top of the list, has got to be Mississippi State, the way Dan Mullins are 100% there. Agree. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. The, 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 the brand of football he brings, it's like it, – it's. I've always thought of the spread offense as the great equalizer. Which I was would, like, yeah. I mean, yeah, it, brings, it can bring a defense to its knees. Yeah, it's yeah, quick. I mean, it's quick. Well, I mean, if you look at what they did against Ole Miss last year in the Egg Bowl, they put up like it was like forty-one, thirty-one. It was not close at all. Um, and they, you know, they, they ran for what, like, like three hundred fifty some odd yards. Yeah, I know they were. They were uh, it, at um, one point. It was a question of whether they would run for yeah. four hundred yards. Yeah, you know, it was yeah. just it was unbelievable. Show. And now, now that they are they are replacing Anthony Dixon, who's with the San Francisco 49ers on the right now. True. But um, and uh, they've also got to put something in their quarterback. My God, they were awful at quarterback. Yeah, and that's year. that's the only um, team that's I think going to hold them back from yeah. really making a push for for a, a really nice bowl game. Yeah. Uh, is the fact that who was going to take the helm for him on offense? Well, and th- there's a couple of different guys now. There's uh, Tyson Lee, who was the starter, who's sort of mediocre. Uh, Chris Ralph was just flat out bad. He, yeah, uh, four, four, just, four touchdowns, 14 picks. I don't believe he could pay um, me to start that guy, to be honest. <laughs> and uh, then there's also an incoming freshman, you might have heard of him, Dylan Farr. Uh, it's, a, it's actually Brett's nephew. And right, um, he, right. he won the state championship, I believe, or at least he got to the state championship in Mississippi last year in his class. So, uh, and, you know, Dan Mullen was on uh, ESPN First Take earlier, or like last week, I guess it was, and uh, he was saying that it's a three man race, like all those guys are like dead even right now, and they haven't named a starter yet. So. Right. And, you know, uh, mentioning that uh, before we start to close out here, uh, another, just give some honorable mentions for some other teams that have really turned themselves around. Oh, yeah. Uh, Kentucky has done a fantastic That's, job uh, yeah. in a couple of years. Really tip my hat to them. Uh, and also, I'll let you give your thoughts as well. Uh, South Carolina. You know, they've had a couple of great coaches, and, you know, what I really look for South Carolina to do, uh, granted, last year's bowl appearance was not exactly that's amazing. <laughs> uh, that's I got, got better to put Connecticut, but, uh, but, you know, yeah. I look for them to make some good competitive runs at bowl games here coming up. Yeah, um, I'll, honestly, like, I'll have to say it before I believe it with Kentucky, um, you know, Rich Brooks stepping down last year and uh, having the reins over Joe Yeah, it's going to hurt a little bit. But, but uh, yeah, I mean, South Carolina, I could, and it's not so much because they're better, but it's like, you know, Georgia and Florida are sort of, you know, they're going to be in a rebuilding mode for sure this year. Right. Losing start quarterbacks and, you know, key players all over the field, but 
Um, yeah, I mean, those, those sound good to me. Um, well, let's see, I guess we're going to go and wrap the show up, guys. Uh, well, we appreciate you watching our, uh, I guess Thank we, can call, again. we can call this the pilot. The but, inaugural uh, episode. If, 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 you, if you have any you know, questions, comments, suggestions, anything, just comment on the Anything on the you video. guys want to talk about, let us know. Right. Yeah, yeah, we're course. here for you. Yeah, on the video below. But uh, that's going to do it. And as always, War Eagle. And Roll Tide.